Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about Dumb Money. This was directed by Craig Gillespie and stars Paul Dano, Pete Davidson, America Ferreira, and Seth Rogen. The movie is based on the book The Anti-Social Network, which in turn is based on the true story of the GameStop short squeeze. And the title of the movie comes from a term for retail investors. Dano plays Keith Gill, who runs a YouTube channel and frequents a subreddit where he makes recommendations for various stocks. And he suggests GameStop is horribly undervalued and recommends buying it. A bunch of his viewers do so, which raises the price of the stock considerably and causes some trouble for Melvin Capital, a hedge fund that was hoping to short the stock, but that's not going to work if the value keeps going up. And indeed, all of these dumb money purchases drove the price of the stock through the roof, screwing Melvin Capital and forcing them into bankruptcy. It's the little guys taking down the big guy. Kind of. The last movie I saw that was based on a true story definitely had some issues. Uh, thankfully, this one is much better than Gran Turismo. I do appreciate seeing a movie that doesn't try to pretend COVID never happened, and indeed it would be weird if this movie did that, because COVID had a pretty huge impact on the whole GameStop thing. There's lots of people wearing masks or being reminded to wear masks. It goes over your nose. They mentioned GameStop selling computer mice, which allowed them to qualify as an essential business, which I think actually did happen. And they talk about Keith's sister unfortunately passing away in 2020, which sadly also happened. This movie has a stellar cast. I confess I don't know a whole lot about the real Keith Gill, as I wasn't as heavily invested in the GameStop thing, literally or figuratively, as some people. But I thought Dano did a very good job playing this accidental celebrity who was just trying to give everyday people some investment advice and inadvertently started a revolution of sorts. Between this and the Batman, he is rapidly becoming one of my favorite actors. Pete Davidson plays Keith's asshole brother Kevin. He is very funny. I think the first time we see him, he's in a car munching on some french fries and then... A minute later, we find out he's delivering food for DoorDash, and that's someone else's food he's eating. And he's doing all this work for DoorDash by borrowing his brother's car without asking. He is an asshole, but he's the funny type of asshole, and he and Dano really do feel like brothers. And Keith's father is played by Clancy Brown, his wife is played by Shailene Woodley. The casting of this entire family is just wild. And even among the titular dumb money, you have Anthony Ramos playing a GameStop employee, America Ferreira plays a nurse, and between this and Barbie, she is having a hell of a year. And we have Seth Rogen playing the hedge fund manager Gabe Plotkin. It's a little weird to see him in what is essentially a straight role, and it's one of the few times I have not heard the signature Seth Rogen laugh, but he is a talented actor and does a really good job of playing this entitled rich asshole. I think the movie did a pretty good job of telling the story of how GameStop became an internet meme and disrupted Wall Street and led to congressional hearings, and tells the story in an entertaining way. It also does a very good job of illustrating just how horrible it is working in retail. I've never actually worked for GameStop, but I imagine its portrayal in this movie is pretty accurate. And it shows a lot of stuff from the subreddit Wall Street Bets, which the real Keith Gill frequented. And if it is half as fucked up in real life as it is in the movie, good lord. While it does not do so to the insensitive levels of Gran Turismo, the movie does play with historical accuracy a bit, especially with the retail investors. The Gill family and the hedge fund managers and the guys running the stock trading company Robinhood are all based on actual people. The movie's titular dumb money? Not really. They're not based on any real individual people, but rather they're all amalgamations of a bunch of different investors. Which makes it really weird when the movie displays the net worth of each of these people at the beginning and end of the movie. Like, whose net worth? These aren't real people, what are you doing? And they are all kind of tropey. I saw one reviewer compare them to Love Actually, which I think is pretty accurate. And whether that's good or bad is probably going to come down to personal taste. I did have some issues with the movie portraying the whole game stonk thing as the little guy taking down the man, which isn't entirely what happened. Yes, a hedge fund went bankrupt because of the short squeeze, and I am not going to shed any tears for them, but a lot of regular people lost money too. People who invested early did pretty well, but those who jumped in late, not so much. Early on in the movie, one of these Love Actually type characters is explaining to her girlfriend exactly how the whole GameStop thing is supposed to work, and she says, you know, that sounds a lot like a pyramid scheme. And she's right, for better or worse, that's exactly what it is. And this is never mentioned again. 
The movie also covers the time when Robin Hood temporarily prevented people from buying more shares of GameStop, and I do remember that happening and thinking at the time, man, that seems kinda shady. Well, it turns out it wasn't. Robin Hood actually had a perfectly valid reason for stopping the trades, which the movie spells out. But after they spell it out, they keep acting like there was something shady going on, and there wasn't. I mean, there may have been other shady things going on, this is Wall Street we're talking about, but this was not one of them. And at the end of the movie, they're still acting like something shady happened there, despite presenting clear evidence to the contrary. And I'm just like, D did we miss something? And it's entirely possible we did. At one point, the studio was apparently contacted by an attorney for one of the billionaire hedge fund douchebags, who politely suggested a few changes to the script if they didn't want to get sued for defamation. The studio claims they did not change anything based on their suggestions, but I'm not sure if I entirely buy that, because it does kind of feel like we went from point A to point C and we gave point B a miss. But in spite of all that, it is still a very entertaining movie. I don't think it's as good as The Big Short, which I'm sure a lot of people will compare this to, but it's good. I don't know if it's good enough to warrant full price, but I can recommend seeing it as a matinee. And that's all I have to say about dumb money. Till next time, take care.